Hey gang, welcome back to Big Board. We're doing some more deck two. We're kind of cranking through August here. And uh, we've now, you know, we're, we're butting our heads as the uh, Axis player against the, excuse me, against this Mercer Matru uh, escarpment and the two sand, uh, sandy slopes here. Really button our heads. Uh, just a quick recap. Uh, we're in the 19th of... Is it 19th? Yeah, 19th of August turn. And the Allies made a uh, preemptive reaction attack here uh, to no effect. No, actually, we're going to retreat. We're going to retreat this guy back. So they... Although it was a uh, ineffectual attack, uh, it cost the uh, allies a step. Um, we do have to retreat both the units that were here back. So, did that. Now, uh, this turn, we actually got enough supply and enough pieces in place to actually attempt uh, two attacks and to threaten two areas. And we DG this arty that was in reserve mode so that it could not, could not react and uh, try and disrupt my attack plan. But the big, the big, the big meat is over here, and the air attack failed. Uh, we just rolled for Artie, and it was pretty average. Uh, that guy, I'm just gonna pop this guy up here, because he, he was all combined in one attack, even though he was sitting here. And he has a range of three, he can make it, but we're just keeping him in a stack like that until the end of the turn, so we can keep track of who's fine and who hasn't. So, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna, Get things a little out of sequence just so I can resolve this attack. That was kind of the point of uh, doing the video. <coughs> so we're going to resolve this attack here, and let's uh, let's kind of run through run through the numbers real quick, and we'll uh, we'll take care of business from there. So I'm going to try and deftly pick up these pieces here. Uh, so it's a DG stack. I think you can see that. Okay. And you may not be able to read all the detail on that, but I'll call it out for you. <coughs> so, a DG stack. And so we're in the combat phase, and you know what? I forgot to move these guys. That's no, okay, never mind. No, I think I did the right thing. That's what I wanted to do. You can't see this, I'll adjust the camera in just a second. I think I can just squeeze in through the viewfinder. And we'll just adjust the camera just a smidgen. There you go. So, uh, I don't know if I can come in very much closer because it'll start to... It'll start to blur out on us. There you go. All right, now, what we've got, and just so I keep track of this, these are the escarpment pieces, and these are the regulars, and these are in hedge up. Uh, these guys all half. So we have 12, uh, 20, uh, sorry, yeah, 12, 23 factors. So we have 23 factors here, which is going to be uh, 11 and a half, all right? And here, the regular guys coming through from this direction, you see there's no uh, uh, terrain affecting everything here. So we're going to do uh, one step, well I don't know why you're there. So there's four, uh, 16, 26, 27 factors there, and there's no reduction in their capability. Now the guys coming down the escarpment, that's six, but it's quartered, so when you take a quarter of six, we need to get a calculator. Uh, and there's six more. I think the mech are halved. Are the mech halved? They are th a third. So that's going to be two. So two for these guys. These are eight. And they're halved. That's four for those guys. And so what's a quarter of six guys? Let's call it 1.5. And there will be six, seven and a half there. 7.5 there. All right. So we've got 11.5 versus uh, 24.5. Oh, it's two to one. All right, so it's two to one. Now that's, 
Hey, can you see that? You can't see that. There's me writing things down you can't see. tripod unfortunately so uh, I'm not as clever as Marco I can't I can't make things uh, can't do everything one handed like he does I need all my hands and all my faculties and I'll focus on one thing at a time and I still make mistakes so uh, I want to say 11 that is a 5 uh, in most most languages that is a 5 all right so what I, was, what I was saying is that we've got a 11 and a half there. Yeah, that's it, you can see that. Okay, 11 and a half, new camera, sorry guys. 11 and a half, 20, 22, 22, yeah. So that's gonna be, uh, that's going to be exactly, uh, well, near enough to being exactly two to one. Now, that's the, that's the one part of the combat. This is big, guys, we get through here, we, we are, Things are happening. Now we're going to roll for surprise and see who uh, who gets surprised. Normally, if I were looking at my little programs that I computer programs I use to work out the odds and things like that, I probably wouldn't do this attack because I would get very scared. Uh, I'm going to use this little guy who I've uh, rebuilt uh, from a couple of turns ago uh, as my lead uh, anti-tank unit because he has a five action rating. I can use these other guys, but they're more expensive to rebuild, so I'm kind of. Game in the system a little bit there, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. And oh, crap, that's not enough. All right, I roll a seven, and to get supply, uh, to get surprised in a regular attack, you need ten or more. And you know, even with the adding one uh, for uh, the hedgehog. Uh, sorry, adding one for the fact that their rating is higher than their rating. So it'd be five minus four. Uh, the DG and the Hedgehog cancel each other out, so we just ignore them. So that, dang it, that just, that just poops on my parade. So no surprise, no shifts. We would have had six combat shifts. So this is gonna make the, come on, let's make some room here. Because we've got more room, there's a better number. Uh, the combat roll on a two to one table in the clear, uh, it's gonna make things ugly. Especially if I roll that number. Eight, we get to add one because we have plus one on the uh, effectiveness or efficiency ratings. And that will, uh, I'll tell you what that result will be, so I don't leave it hanging, but I'm gonna check one thing for us so that uh, I don't make a mistake. Yeah, that's just such a naughty result. That's gonna be then basically an option. Both sides are gonna take an option, that means I'm gonna lose a unit and they're gonna lose a step. And that is not gonna push them out of that hex. So that attack was all for naught. Uh, and in fact, you know what? This wouldn't, wouldn't have been um, doubled in any case. Uh, because we have a hedgehog and uh, these anti uh, anti tank units, so it would be just one and a half quartered. So one and a half is four and a half quartered. So it would have been one. That's not going to change the uh, change the result the result of odds. But I want to get it right for you guys in case you were interested in combat effects of hedgehogs. I'm just curious to see if that makes the terrain. Uh, close terrain when the actual attack happens. It just affects the defensive dice, I think. Yeah, and, and makes it uh, heavy anti-tank effects. Okay, so there you go. So these guys, here's, here's the, what the uh, losses will be. We'll take a step loss from the sixth uh, I think they're the Kiwis, six New Zealand. And these guys have to lose this guy. And the reason why I just picked them is because they all have the same, uh, the same factor, the same rating, which doesn't really matter. So, of course, if I had to lose, it, or lose more than one step, it would have mattered and we would have been a little bit more specific about that. 
All right, so we're chipping away at the British, the Commonwealth forces here, and uh, not to not to much success by the looks of it. So let's see if I can slide these back in here without punching them all over the place. It's, this escarpment terrain has really started to tick me off. I do not want to play an OCS game set in Israel. Like the Syrian war or something like that. Okay, all right. There you go, that's all I had time for you.